Hello everyone! In today's video, we are going to create a node setup that will allow us to see the output of some of the rounding operation nodes. This will allow us to better understand how they work. Let's start by opening Blender and creating a new scene. We can remove the default objects by selecting them all with the A key and then hitting the X key. Now we can add a new mesh grid object. In the material tab, we add a new material. Now we can move to the shading workspace to edit the new material. Let's make some room. Now we add a texture coordinate node, a mapping node set to operate on texture. Now we add a separate XYZ node and then a new mat node with the operation set to greater than. We set the threshold to zero. Now we connect the Y component to the value and the output to the color input of the shader. Now, if we set the location offset of the mapping node to 0.5, we will see a black and white line that represents the x-axis of the coordinate system. Now we add a new mat node, set the operation to modulo, and connect the output to the threshold value of the greater than operation. Now we can see that the modulo returns an output that is bound in the range 0 to the threshold value for positive inputs and in the range 0 to negative threshold for negative inputs. If we want an operation similar to the modulo, but with an output that is always positive, we can change the modulo operation with a wrap operation. With the wrap operation, we can also specify a second value for the lower bound, whereas with the modulo operation, the lower bound is always zero. Another option that Blender provides for the mat node is the snap operation. As we can see, the output of the snap operation generates a step-like increment pattern. Finally, if we set the operation to ping pong, we can see that the output is bound in the range 0 to the scale parameter that we specify. And unlike the modulo operation or the wrap operation, the transition is always linear and when the output reaches its maximum, it doesn't drop to 0. I hope that this simple exercise has been able to provide a better understanding of how the rounding operation provided by Blender work. And I think that's all for today. Bye bye.